this while we're all up here. Okay. Um, okay, so, start out with safety. Obviously, this is a big, dangerous machine. It's got high voltages in it. The tube runs on 25 kV. The high voltages do go all over inside this cabinet, so don't open the side panels unless you have, unless you have a really good reason and watch what you're doing. Um, the laser light that comes out of this is under ordinary circumstances safe. It's not going to go anywhere, but if you somehow get your eyeball down the beam line, it will blind you instantly and forever. If you're ever working with the machine open, which sometimes you need to do, you've got these really sexy laser safety glasses. Their whole job is to take the beam for about a second or two, so that's all they'll take. They will vaporize, and it'll make you blink and pull your head back. The machine closed, running, it's fine. Just use it like this. So, safety first. Don't be an asshole, and the machine will not hurt you. Um, a thing to remember is that the, you can't see the beam. It's, it's infrared, so like if you're doing one of these, and this axis comes this way, yeah, that's going to burn you right there, and you won't notice it. I've done it before, so don't do that either. Um, just when it's running, stand right here, even if it's open and you're focusing it or something, that's okay. Just be aware of where the beam goes. Um, let me show you the basics. This here is the laser tube. Basically, got a high voltage power supply in here, shoots about 25 kV across this low pressure carbon dioxide gas, blazes mirror right here, sends the beam this way, mirror right here which is on the y-axis, sends the beam this way. A mirror right here, which is the x-axis, sends the beam down and through a lens which focuses it to a point. Even though it's a laser, the beam in real life is probably about that fat, which isn't, it's too fat to really do anything useful with, so there is a lens that focuses it down to a point. So when you're cutting, it's important to have your material in focus or you're not going to get good results. So, let's fire this thing up. There's start switch, stop switch, separate switch for the high voltage power supply. Okay. If ever the machine is doing something and you need it to stop right away, stop switch there, opens up the contactor, cuts power to everything. It will stop what it's doing. It's not like a software stop command. It, it really does cut power. With this switch on, the laser can do its thing. And you can see right here, this little milliamp gauge. Now, I'm going to turn it off. The capacitors still have a little bit of a charge. So if I pulse it now, it's just a little bit of laser light. That could potentially hurt you. So if you're going to do something where you need the laser to, you want to know that it's not going to turn on, but you want the machine to like, do a test run to frame something up, push this little laser button with it off. That'll pulse it and discharge the power supply. So like this, I can send it a pattern right now. As far as the machine's concerned, the laser's operating, it's cutting stuff, but it would really be doing nothing. I think there's still a... Yeah, there's still a file loaded in there, so... The way to tell if the beam's operating is this milliamp gauge. That's connected straight through between the power supply and the tube, so if that's not doing anything, there's no beam. Well, there's not much in that part of the pattern, but you can see it wobble. It's, now it's lazy. There. There. It's now it's not. Okay. If you have a job running, you want to stop it, you can pause. When it's paused, you can pick it back up. Or hit escape, and it'll cancel it. Okay, to 
the load material in here. Okay. Hit the Z axis button right here. Z axis move and bring it down, you know, quite a bit. Grab your, grab your stuff, put it in there. And there's, uh, there's two of these guys. These are focus gauges. They are they're of the right thickness to just work like this. You take it, you put it on top of your material, and escape here and bring it back over. This little limit switch here, you want to make sure that it's lined up. And then, never use the axis reset, always use the axis move. Bring it up, and that'll cut it off. Pull that out. Alright, so now we're, you've got material loaded, it's at the right depth, it's going to focus, it's going to be good. Um, this machine can only cut uh, wood, plastic, and uh, that, that uh, not any plastic, nothing chlorinated, nothing fluoridated, no PVC, no Teflon. Um, ABS is fine, um, Lexan, which is what this is, works, but it's a little smoky. Uh, acrylic works beautiful. Um, we actually also found out last night that if you have something that's uh, matte aluminum, like a MacBook Pro, that it'll actually, that you have to use a lot of power, but it'll actually etch it. It will not cut it, it will etch it. Uh, things that it will not cut, metal in general, glass, um, things that aren't flat. It's got to be like, rounded things, won't do that, it's got to be a flat surface. Um, circuit boards, don't try and cut circuit boards in half. There's a lot of things, it's just hard on the optics, it's not good for the machine. If you suspect that you're being an asshole by trying to cut something in half, the answer is yes, yes you are. Don't do that. Um, cut the materials it was meant to cut, it can do quite a lot. Don't abuse the machine. The optics are expensive, hard to clean, and they do have a limited lifespan. So, the less smoke and dust and stuff you can create in this, the longer the machine's going to run. Um, as far as maintenance on this thing goes, it has optics that need to be cleaned, it has a lens that has a limited lifespan. It's got all kinds of little fiddly things that can go wrong with it. Do not try and service it yourself. If the machine breaks down, if it stops running, if it loses focus, if any of that happens, let me know. I know all the ins and outs of this thing, it's easy to fuck it up worse if you don't know what you're doing. And it's, just trust me on this one. Um, the one thing that might happen, just because just because all the exhaust fans and all that are kind of clutched in this corner, if you hear this noise, that's the chiller saying that there's no flow. Make sure that you don't have a kinked uh, chiller line. But uh, yeah, this thing, that'll start complaining. And this thing should provide adequate cooling. If you ever see the temperature gauge get up like approaching 40, You'll notice that the power is going to drop off and it's not going to operate correctly. It should never happen. So, if that does happen, there's something wrong with the chiller. Okay, so that's that's basically the machine. Um, let's get a file of it. Okay, there's some, um, this software right here, LaserWork, this is what actually drives the machine. And the two kind of files that it can take in are images, most common image formats if you want to raster scan something. There's Photoshop on here. I suggest that you take whatever you want to scan and knock it down into a very contrasty image so it gets a good half tone. It doesn't do shades of gray. The laser, when it's raster scanning, lasers are on or off. So you want to have black and white images. Um, and also it can take in AutoCAD 07 format DXF files. And AutoCAD 2012 is on. So, um, like TexRas, Pycase, he got that off the internet somewhere as a DXF. And uh, I, I don't even think he did anything with it in AutoCAD. I think it was ready to go. Imported it into the software, set the power level off the internet. And it actually took out really well. Um, I'm not going to cover AutoCAD. It's a complicated topic. Um, 
really 99% of things that AutoCAD does, you don't care about for this machine. Um, just the, real quickly, the basics. 